Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. What about you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> okay, so just before we start, I want to give a brief introduction about you to all our viewers here. Sure. sure. Um. So a multifaceted personality, Sarah Peshwam is a is passionate about women empowerment. She's the vice president of Street Cause by Guru Nanak Institute and uh, women empowerment, and an undergraduate student of technology. Her focus, her work focuses on addressing ill treatment of women, and she looks to further active individual participation. Sarah also hopes to explore the world with new lenses and dabble creatively with photography, editing, and videography. So, hi! Great to have hi. you here today. It's really <laughs> honored to be over here and speaking to you. So, let me start off by asking the first link that we have, which is the Rakshan project. So, how did you get into it? Uh, actually, once there was an uh, even going in our college on the women's day uh, so that's the way i got to co- uh, come up with this site and i just want i just feel that it's really great what the work you do and how you just go to different colleges and acknowledge and it was a really good decision that i came up and i've seen the whole events i've seen in the sakshi uh, the other page of yours like you have done like collective ideas collective actions whatever you have going to do and there were different kinds of speakers also so in that way i just felt like uh, in this pandemic situation and most of the uh, scenario whatever we are facing right now it's little bit tough and being in a mm-hmm. pandemic situation it's really tough to even overcome that so this would be a little uh, great and a little good change in the situation so that we can just collab and we have an interactive session so that's the reason i just got to know and i wanted to have a session with you mm-hmm. Thank you so much for reaching out to us to do that. It is always an honor to talk to Rakshans who are doing the work on the ground, and especially when we are considering you to prevent harm, and when we are considering all of you as people who can interact with people within your and within your houses, within your communities, and affect that change. It's extremely important to have these conversations. So thank you so much. Um, so. Sarah, can you tell us a little bit about how you got passionate towards women empowerment and how that journey of yours began? Yeah, sure, I can. Uh, actually, mm-hmm. I was on a vacation. I went to Saudi Arabia to visit my dad. In that, uh, uh, in that year, uh, something drastically changed my life. In- to women empowerment uh like every day we go for walking and we have normal things like we go out right so on that normal day it was a normal day and we were having uh, just walking around there was two girls with me who were doing the same thing they were walking one was around 15 years old and another one was 10 years old uh there was a car which had four members in them they were around a speed of 120 because they uh, in abroad they the speed limit is too high when it's compared yeah. to india yeah. so it was around 120 uh, but when they uh, they when they were reaching towards the mm-hmm. uh, towards the girls they were literally try, trying to snatch one girl inside the car so okay. what happened is they tried their best two members one was pulling the girl who was 10 years old and other one was, the other person who was sitting in the car was pulling the man who was sitting uh, who was trying to pull the girl so what happened is the girl was that confident brave enough that mm-hmm. though she was 10 years old she would try to pull herself and she literally saved herself and she didn't even allow she even hit the man with her slipper that was the total different scenario which i've seen and that brought me like if she can do then why can't i and if this is the change which brought me to uh, myself then why can't i speak up to bring some change to the other girls to empowerment it so this was something that uh, totally changed my mind in that situation and this brought me closer to this thing like encouragement and empowerment towards women yeah what you're saying is extremely important because what we're trying to do with the rakshan project is create leaders who are not afraid to speak is to intervene in such situations and deescalate the situations and also first establish a norm where such situations don't occur in the first place where there is no harm thank you so much for sharing that experience with me yeah that is yeah uh so 
if you would say that so right now the work that you are doing even with street cause be it with sakshi uh, i mean the rakshan project uh, how did you think that your training as a rakshan has helped you through the journey like rakshan is something uh, when i was a student i was in my first year uh, then i got to know th- uh, about this and they were totally motivating like it's not that every girl is confident and focused towards whatever she is it's that everyone visualize the thing what do you have to do in the future but at some point uh, you know like our india is something we get our whatever our parents decide when you have when we take birth that's the thing which we follow from the start and whatever we visualize it it's nothing that we follow it after a point we give up and we choose some other path whatever our parents have decided and we go to that it's nothing like girls if as being a girl we have to be mm-hmm. confident focused we have to face everything whatever the society is doing so it just to bring the confidence focus that what uh, rakshin project has brought me and that totally that a small conversation of half an hour with the mm-hmm. speaker or uh, whatever ma'am told that was totally a change of life so yeah after that i joined in the street cars okay so can you tell me a little about street cars and what you're doing there yeah uh, actually uh, street cars uh, gni works for all the uh, for all the uh, sectors not only about women empowerment mm-hmm. it's for all the sectors like old age home environment education mm-hmm. towards kids and uh, how they face now as in this pandemic situation uh, we are just trying to uh, see what like uh, recently in hyderabad we were having a drastic effect of floods so that that yeah, became a huge uh, huge problem over here so what we did is there was a, a home which there was a home which needed uh, the roof part because whatever the water was uh, draining mm-hmm. it was totally uh, getting filled in the, in the house so that's the reason we just took the uh, information we did mm-hmm. it in one day and that's how everything works and mm-hmm. we did one more event and uh, one more event last year that was a falaknuma palace uh, in falaknuma the home uh, mm-hmm. there was a girl home in which uh, the, the home was good but they didn't have any washroom kind of things and there were okay. uh, the things like uh, they can't even change the this uh, it was on the terrace where have where they have to go and do it there were no do- proper doors and if someone comes on the terrace they can uh, see them visualize them and whatever the book is going on so that's the reason we just went there and uh, visualized things the scenario by looking out what are the needs of them like that we have planned and we have done the events and these are some of the events which we have done and a lot more Okay, so right now you are uh, focused on activities uh, within Hyderabad. Is that yeah, how you're yeah, situated? Yeah, within Hyderabad. Yeah. Okay. Fine. That's cool. I also live in Hyderabad, so. Oh, that's great. Really interesting to work with you. You tell me. Yeah, sure. So, so <laughs> going on to something about you, you it's written over here that you are interested in photography, editing, and videography. So. can you tell us a little about how that interest came about oh uh, yeah like from the starting of the my uh, starting of my career from starting i was like i have to do something which is of editing part and i like editing and making videos like which are animated one like trying new new things which are i like to explore a lot so uh, from this uh, childhood i used to uh, roam a lot so in that way i just got habituated like tra- capturing a video editing it uh, in that proper way like, uh, giving some am- uh, animated things and that's how i got a little bit affected to it then i got it have you ever thought about using your photography and your editing skills in order to uh, uh, for as a tool of advocacy and if you have used it to increase awareness Mm, uh, not probably I used a lot, but sometimes I use it like clipping photos and we upload. It. We have an Instagram page, so we upload it over there. But I'm not uh, used a lot of it. Okay, uh, I have two questions for you. Let's make it short. Sure, okay. Not only you asking me when I ask you, so that will be. Ha, sure, sure. Good. Uh, so as we both are of the same generation, so we'll be having, we'll be facing the same issues, right? So, uh, how, according to you, can online bullying against women be countered? Because in this pandemic situation, we have faced a lot of online bullying, right? So, how, according to you, we can control it? Okay. So, uh, the first thing that 
okay when we talk about online bullying i think a very important factor to address is the lack of accountability right so what people assume is that i shall go on to a platform i shall say anything i want so that i shall go online i shall say anything i want and i can get away with it so that's why i think um systemic intervention like the one that we are doing is extremely important and i also am of the opinion that the contents that we put out even through our channels even through our social media channels that can convey the message of com community accountability and taking and saying that oh we stand for this and we shall expect only that level of respect and love for each other so in order to create that i think we just need to work together we need to work towards educating others and i think that's literally the only way possible to go forward and yeah. <laughs> do you agree with me do you have any yeah, other thing to add i don't have any other thing i totally agree with you for that <laughs> because now online bullying has become a major part of it uh, in this pandemic it has become a major part like if the, someone this it says and in the pandemic situation we were in the phase of like dilemma depression we went through a lot of things because we were having empty minds that's the reason so and that due to that online bullying uh, a lot of members were affected too so i think that proper education and awareness towards us is the only key that we can have yeah like even specifically talking about child sexual abuse there was there was almost I I don't know the exact percentage of the spike, but there was a great spike in the child sexual abuse materials that was circulated, and India had one of the highest percentages. And um, that's not something we need to be aspiring towards. Which is where you, as Rakshans, come in, where you can take that message on the ground and spread the word. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, wait. I'm sorry. I just I lost complete thought. Oh wait, do you want uh, do you want to ask me any other questions? Yeah, I have a few of them. I'll just ask okay, you sure. about. Session. Yeah, I'll ask you about oh. the session. If it's fine, I'll ask you now. It's not a problem. Okay. So my next question was about youth leaders, right? So we we say Mashal, but we we want every youth who's engaged with us to be leaders. So how do you think leaders such as you can contribute towards? creating that social change that we are talking about and how can you create a preventive atmosphere what steps do you think you can take and what are some difficulties that you face okay uh, like empowering people it's not only important that we empower uh, women or men it's not only about one gender like empowering being a leader there are some uh, effects that we follow if we empower one person in a community or who we are sharing the thoughts it uh, drastically uh, grabs all the members uh, like if you know some person he just go and speak out to them and drastically a uh, few of the among members join us along But the journey, like uh, breaking the cycle of poverty, ignorance, uh, whatever we we are currently facing right now, is just that we try to bring that awareness, that focus, that confidence, whatever we are lacking in it. As being a leader, it's really tough doing that because most of the members, as a youth, we don't even uh, we don't listen to a few things. If it's a good news, also we just scroll it. We don't uh, go on continuously hearing that. Or it's like it's, and it's going on. Let's take a chill. Uh, we face it. Let's go with the flow. That's the thing we follow. But we never practically do that or experience it. When we experience those things, it's just that uh, we lack in it and we start panicking. That's not the only way we can panic. So just talk, uh, talking about us and bringing the awareness, knowledge, skills, whatever we have, and sharing them. As being a leader, that's the main quality which we need. Like motivating and inspiring is the main theme of that. As being a leader, it's difficult, but nothing is pos impossible. Thank you for saying that it's possible because that's <laughs> we are literally the only hope we have at this point. <laughs> yeah, you are right because. It's easy to ignore something when you are not going to feel empathetic towards the situation. We are not brought up to be very empathetic towards each other. Like even in college when you enter college, it's not 
everyone's not going to be on the same plane as you everyone's not going to be as we are not going to develop skills we don't develop skills of empathy as we grow up and that's why i think it's very important to reach people at the beginning stage at like when they are youth and you know to create that kind of inspiration motivation and that sense of solidarity that can bring about change exactly so moving on to my next question we are often uh, i mean as productions we are faced with the question of creating safe spaces so what is a safe space according to you according to me right now there is no such kind of space or safe place but uh, it's something that if we are uh, if we have that uh, zeal and that empathy that whatever situation comes around we can handle it it's it's nothing like uh, i can't get the proper words but it's it's like uh, we don't have a proper thing it's just that like how you control yourself and how you go through the situation and handle it like without panicking the situation and without uh, getting out you just have to analyze with a calm mind that you can do it rather than just assuming that i can't do it i can i have a panicking situation like something is going wrong and in that way you are uh, in a safe position that you can do it so safety according to you is preparedness yeah totally it depends uh, upon you and how you handle the situation and that's how you are safe you know so uh, wouldn't you also agree that creation of safe spaces where a lot of us can be together where you have the sense of confidence that you are not alone wouldn't that also benefit us to yeah, create yeah that's beneficial and there are many more sites yeah. which were created like uh, but uh, before we call them or reach out to them it will take a longer time than we handle it on like if you are in a situation if you call and if the uh, members are around us also it takes us a lot of time like we need to tell that this and this it's not easy process if the problem is in front of you and there are certain amount of people who are uh, who will be around you so in that way you can just take the help of them rather than calling someone who are involved in this moment they are doing great but still i believe that safety comes uh, we have to be safe from ourselves by hand Okay. Okay. And now I'll be asking one question. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. How important it is to create awareness among the society when it comes to physical abuse, domestic violence. Oh, it's extremely important because okay. So when we talk about a situation like domestic abuse, it is not an act that is singular. It's not an act that just happens right it's an act of extending your power it's an act of saying i am more powerful than you and i shall now exercise that power and i shall show you my place and i shall show you your place essentially that's the kind of power dynamic that exists and that's why i think it's very important for people to know about it because a there are systems of oppression all around us which when they cross cut each other then there is more marginalization say there is casteism there is racism there is ableism there is there is misogyny and when all of those forces are together at play a person who is at the intersection of those is the most marginalized so as a society when you're going to create a system as an alternate to this oppressive system then you are essentially creating a way for people to break out and to actually shift to a new normal because right now it won't be possible for them to shift to a new normal and to bring about that radical change all you can do is start from the roots start from the basic level and then empower step people step. from there yeah step yes step. Exactly. and uh, secondly when you uh, uh, when you talk about preventive action of course like it's it's so that we can create a system of care a, create a system of solidarity and that's not possible when people are not aware of ground reality you can't acknowledge or prevent ground reality when you don't know what is out there so these are the two reasons why it's extremely pertinent for people to know what goes on inside homes and that's why it's also extremely pertinent that when we say we want a rakshan in every home 
that's something that sakshi is aspiring to do right so when we say that the very purpose of that is to make sure that every single home can be a safe space and every single person who is involved in a family unit can ensure that there is some kind of support system that is given to the survivor and there is some kind of person who can create an environment that is safe who can who can call out behaviors and who can also facilitate the creation of an environment of love and care like everyone so, say the safe side comes from our home and our surroundings first then exactly and then when you realize that that in itself is not a safe space for so many women for so many children then that is a major issue <laughs> so we need that to come we need we need people to inculcate that behavior of empathy and to take accountability and to actually create that change so okay uh, i have a point about uh, it's not about related to that but i have a point like uh, as this youth as a youth uh, we just pictureize and imagine the things which we see in movies and uh, we just pictureize them like if this is what a picture is showing we just assume that uh, that will happen in our real life too whatever we just imagine whatever we see in the uh, movies so what do you think that causes against the violence towards women like we live in a fantasy world and when it comes to reality we want the same thing whatever we have seen in movies and serials web series etc but uh, how can we, uh, that be against violence uh, against women okay so are you asking me like okay so basically essentially you're saying that pop culture or generally affects our lives yeah. and how we can use that as a social tipping point as a tool of social tipping point or are, are you asking me how it affects our lives how it affects our life like oh uh, when we see a oh. pictureized movie or something if something is good we uh, just grab that if something is bad even though we yeah. grab that by just seeing that he is uh, looking super cool in that why can't we do the same thing why can't we uh, just have that in our reality even we will be looking so cool like him that's the thing which we you always do and we just pictureize and we live in a fantasy world where whatever is shown on the screen we just imagine yeah. that it will happen in our real life so yeah. that's what my question is yeah so like even when you take regular movies like telugu movies tamil movies hindi movies okay when you take a basic issue of stalking right stalking as equate equated to romance that in itself is problematic because it's like monkey see monkey do so if i'm going to see something sh- shown to me especially by people who we revere so much right because we we do give that status we do give that celebrity status to everyone in movies and when we see that happening we're like oh yeah that that seems like something cool and um the, there's also an issue, uh, the thing is okay even if you see sakshi we try to use a lot of movies we try to use a lot of uh, visual media in order to trigger some feelings in order to say that this can be what you can emulate because it's easier to do something that you see it's easy to see something it's is easy to see something um, that is um, Okay, it's easy to see an alternative and think of that as reality, right? Because for a lot of times, when you just when you're just going to say we need to create a system of care and love, if people don't know what that system is, how are they going to create? That's why you need movies. So right now, what movies do is just reinforce what is already there, which is the system of violence. Hmm. Exactly. System of violence and subjugation. So I think that's why it's extremely important to change the narrative, maybe to to you to use the same you that's use the same principle, but to to us, which is why even your skills as a videographer and as a video editor can be put to so much use, right? Because when people see things, they feel things. They feel things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You have any other question for me? Ah, uh, you carry on. I'll ask you. Just... No, because I am running out of questions for you. So I, it would. I love this conversation that is happening right now. So you go and ask some questions. It's fine. Okay, sure, fine. Okay. Ah, uh, what do you think is social media used in a right way for creating awareness, or it is an uh, encouraging 
for women discrimination. Oh, I think okay. So there are a lot of okay, so the internet is vast, right? And you yes. have so many pockets of things that are happening at all given points of time. Like at any given point of time, I can search one fact and I will find both for statements and against statements. So that's how divided we are as a world. So when you ask that statement, I don't think that is a straitjacket solution. I mean, uh, there is a straitjacket answer to it, whether it reinforces the same systems that are already there, because it largely depends on the kind of media that you already follow. And especially, um, have you watched the doc? Uh, have you watched uh, Social Dilemma, which came out on Netflix? No, no, I didn't watch. Okay, so it, it's a documentary which. Um, basically boggles your mind <laughs> and uh, essentially the um, the basic the ground norm that it's built on is that what so what you see on social media the way they generate profit is by is by showing us things that we already like because then we are more prone to engaging with that kind of content so say i am prone to okay both of us care about women we say that we are for women empowerment. We are going to be given more posts or we are going to be given more reels that are tended towards that side, that are tended towards women empowerment. But say I am a person who is anti-feminist, okay? Who says that women are already equal to men. I don't need a movement like this. To, yeah. So to that person is going to push out content that leans the other way. And that's how these people are generating money because they get more engagement in that way. And that way they get to, that way people get to see more ads and they generate more profit. So that's how social media as a platform itself works. But so I what think, we, yeah. uh, sorry for interruption, but I think that social media is something which we are taking in a bad way also. It's, it's as we women has total empowerment, like we have total powers, like if something is gone, we'll just post it and we'll just do it. But if this thing is correct also, just making it wrong and showing in social media that it's wrong, it's totally a different thing. Like recently, yeah. as, uh, if you have seen, there was a girl uh, in a car, the boy just, uh, it actually became viral. The video was the viral. Like the boy just hit the car of the woman yeah. and she just blamed like he did abuse to me, harassment, everything. She charged him everything. Like, it's as we have the right, uh, we can speak up, but we don't uh, just can't degrade some person's life. That made him to totally, he lost his job, his friends were around, the society, you know, how they uh, spoke, uh, how they uh, cope up with this situation when something goes wrong and they sh uh, show that the person is totally a wrong man. For before, how many things if you have done right, but after one thing that goes viral, then total his image is on a zero position. Like no one treats him as the same way. But I just think that we have, whatever the power we have right now, we have to, social media is a platform where everything is 50% right and 50% wrong. But choosing it for a right path is better and whatever facilities we have now uh, as being a woman, like women rights, uh, we have awareness of situations. We have to use it in a right way rather than bringing a person down and making his life as a woman. So, uh, yeah. 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 So, um, okay. So when we talk about a scenario like that, the issue is that, yes, it is wrong. It is extremely sad saddening that someone who hasn't committed as much harm is accused for that much harm because that again negates there is also a reason there is also a necessity for us to be okay a there is a response there is a necessity for us to be as responsible as we possibly can but b there is also an issue that most times when you talk about say a case of sexual abuse it happens between two people and the thing is, you would much rather side with the side that has already been marginalized rather than the other side, which is why we already always say, don't blame the victim, support her, believe, yeah. uh, not even her, believe them. And so I think if we conscious, A, we need to consciously do that because that is literally the only way we can move forward and we can break systems of violence. But secondly, when you did talk about how this person was 
like the whole cancel culture thing right that's how people deal with it and that is again wrong that's why when we talk about restorative justice or when we talk about transformative justice we are looking at the kind of harm that is caused and we are trying to create change from that we are trying to create accountability because okay say even that this person did commit harm did commit whatever the girl said that she committed even if we put him behind jails and we um say he was he was in some way uh, like put in jail or something okay even then is there a sense of accountability like at at any given point of time does this person understand that what they did was wrong or does this person get what they deserve which was not to be harmed and a some kind of answer to that so that's why it's important to bridge that divide it's important to say that when there is harm caused there is need to be accountable and and by saying that you are also creating you are you are acknowledging the relationship between the abuser and the person who is abused and you are trying to say that this person deserves a chance to heal no 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 i didn't say that he uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no 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 i'm just saying that it i would so when that's why we don't we shouldn't ideally be taking stances that are harmful to some person but we should rather be taking stances that are beneficial to some other person you see there's a difference there yeah there is so a that's what i mean so that's the kind of justice that we are also trying to inculcate amongst the russians so okay do you want to ask or shall i continue continue okay so sure. uh what role do the parents do uh what role the parents are having in neutral uh, neutralizing their children mindsets or supporting them to the victim strike yeah so i think parents play a huge role in all our in all our lives in itself right like if if what our parents say are us- is usually something that we listen to and say yeah that probably seems right and they care for me so i'm going to listen to that so if a parent is going to create a kind of environment where it's not okay to say that you were harmed by someone where it's not okay for you to ask for your own rights or assert your own boundaries then let's okay yeah when when a parent cre- when a parent creates such an environment then what it essentially tells the child or tells the victim is that i deserved to be treated the way that i deserved to be treated and hence i do not deserve the justice that i might want okay, okay so the point then right or uh, like yeah. when a victim when we have a victim in the child you know whatever the surroundings the neighborhood for us when we are pet or when we are so low and petrified broken we are fragile with the things which has happened or in this such we are for the victim then what happens is even in rural areas the parents don't support they just mean that the thing which has happened is totally work was and whatever she because in different places the mindset is different because some parents still have the mindset of the old generation so that's a good task of changing them when a girl is uh, petrified with the things and she's totally fragile then uh, if she don't get a parent support or any family members support and when the neighbors are totally uh, uh, scolding her or abusing her with whatever the thing happened to her like claiming her that totally your cause and your but the thing is she even did because that's what has happened and there is no support for that and in that case she totally become fragile and the, yeah. the she take a step which is very gonna destroy her life because it's already destroyed and rather on what she says she she can't even think because no one is supporting her and we can't go and say something so yeah you yeah. can't do it yeah so exactly as you said that we have this old system where we think that a person like a person who does go through it goes through a lot of harm a lot of trauma and they do think that their entire life is done and also the kind of the kind of power that society associates with say something like sexual harm that in itself is a very like it makes you feel this small so you are not going to assert your opinion so what we need to do is we need to engage with parents we need to okay see the first thing is parents don't really know the reality of what is going on 
they do not know what child sexual abuse is they do not know how to respond to child sexual abuse their first instinct is to say if we ignore it then it shall pass we need to break that mindset we need to say that you need to do work that you need to support your child and you need to you need to facilitate an environment where that child can heal because what that kind of trauma is going to do is it's going to take on and on and on it's going to go through the family it's not only going to stay within this family it's going to go on to the next generation and that's how the trauma goes on so the first step that needs to be taken is to create a place where a person can heal and that's literally the basic and you need to make care as a discipline you need to make sure that you need to make sure that you you can't just say i am there for you and not be there for them when they actually need you you need to make sure that you're always there for them that you're 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 open to listening to them that when they tell you something you will respect it and treat them as human beings because often what we do we we call we tackle this concept that's called adultism you, you might have seen it if you were on our channels yeah so when you talk about something like adultism what it essentially means is that a parent is asserting their opinion on a child mm. and and at often times the child feels ignored a child feels like their opinion or their voice doesn't matter and that and through this entire and that is abuse right through that system of abuse what happens is that most times when a person when a child goes through something they are not going to tell people or they are going to say that they deserved it that's why when we talk about the four barriers this is one of the major barriers that are there that cross cuts through the four barriers because this is one of those causes that we need to tackle that's why even when we talk about uh, each teach two in the rakshan project we make it a point to ask you to go to a parent and talk to them because parents don't know what is going on they don't know that it's a very there is a very high possibility that their own child might have gone through abuse and not told them anything so it's important to educate them it's also imp important to empower them enough to say to be good parents and to be there for their children yeah so but uh, one thing is that when we do an awareness camps and when we try to spread the knowledge whatever we have about this uh, empowerment thing it's just that we only do in the areas which we are new we don't go for the rural uh, areas or some Places which doesn't have the facilities of moving it, they are uh, where still or uh, they will be having like child marriages, abuses will be going on because they are not even uh interacted towards uh they are not even knowledge about like government, the laws, everything. Just they just think that the child has come to this age and our responsibility is to just be done with her by marrying. When so so in that way they just collapse all her dreams. Whatever uh. And whenever we do this awareness camps, like like you know the awareness thing, even I know, and some of the places we go, and even they'll be having a few or few ideas like how the law is, how it's going on. But as compared to some places like uh, rural areas, they don't even have the chance. They don't get to know. And I think we have to better go there for bringing the awareness, so that will be a little good and a better change for a boy or for a thing to look at. Yeah, so what do you say about that? Yeah, you are absolutely right. That's all I have to say about that. Like, even when we talk about the Russian project, when we want to take it forward, it is so that we can engage more people, we can mobilize more power, in order to take it to the places where it specifically needs to go to. As you said, a lot of people don't know the like. Okay, when Sakshi actually started out, like twenty eight years ago. we started off as a creative education center and uh, the point was to we went around to people in different villages and we spoke to them about what they are facing this was about domestic violence of course so we spoke to them about what they might be facing within their houses and so many women came out with answers and that's the thing right it's not when we talk about something that happens within your homes that cross cuts all sections of society and that happens every in every single place so it's extremely important to take it that and we need support of people like you we need more support we need more students we need more people in general to be aware and to take that awareness to places because 
one more one more thing is i can i can as well create like a say like a trade fair show okay where i'm just shouting out information to random people but say two or three people will pick it up so when we talk about making a ruck, creating a ruction in every home it is to say that you will you are more probable you're probably going to listen to your sister more than you listen to a random stranger Obviously. and so and my sister is going to have more of an influencing power on your entire on the life and the family unit as such so that's why we are trying to do that and that's the kind of intervention that we hope to cause and um, it'll also be part of the fellowship program too so that's how we plan to take it forward so thank you so much for that question and we also maybe okay that i can't come in. <laughs> okay we yeah. continue to i just want to... yeah it is to it is to take it forward like that that is the aim and that is something i think we can achieve especially with people like you yeah it takes time but it, for sure we can achieve it yeah uh, what do you uh, think about what is the role of man in empowerment of women what is the major goal oh it's to okay so the thing is patriarchy is a system that is created by men for men correct so if you are ever going to tackle it the onus is on men to tackle it so if there is any barrier to the empowerment of a woman then it is usually because of a system that is created by a man so what a man should ideally do is educate his own peers talk to other men and tell them to be decent human beings in the first place to respect other people's boundaries to care for other people and that's how you create that change like i don't think women i don't think men need to come and open doors for women i don't think that is women empowerment i don't think they need to put chairs for women i don't think that matters what they need to do really is to take responsibility for what has been happening that they need to realize and acknowledge that violence against women and children is not violence that just appears it's something that is perpetrated by men and they need to take accountability for that and they need to talk to other people about it. yeah that uh, onus is actually on them <laughs> even i think like uh, as uh, the empowerment role which uh, the main role that uh, man plays in empowerment is like we have seen from the starting like it's it may be a father friend any man colleague director anyone it's something like they break all the stereotypes gender and just they try to have the ability and facility for a success they just show in that way uh and, and that also help us uh when we are having such kind of good people and such kind of a uh, great man who are in the support of that that really needs a crucial role in our in the change or in you know, women empowerment so i think that also needs a major role yeah mm-hmm. yeah it is extremely important to you know we have such strict boundaries for gender and gender identity gender expression we have so much policing that goes on to what a person is allowed to do like even it when you're told to talk school. about actually it starts from school it's like a uh, discrimination like if uh, like in school if used to be if a boy is has done something wrong there would be a punishment like two girls and a boy sitting in the middle whereas uh, the the same thing doesn't happen with girls because there was a discrimination of the sexual thing like uh, it happens the thing starts from our school from our starting career of our uh, life so it's something that it should be changed right now and uh, in hyderabad now i'm undergraduate i'm completing my engineering and the same thing uh, if if a strict ma'am or a strict faculty come there will be we'll be having a different benches right for boys and for girls so uh, the discrimination will start from school so that we can't even change it after we have grown up because from the school whatever we learn that's a basic step whatever we learn from school and we have thought that uh, things should be different and for punishment the boys will be given that girls should sit it starts from school so that's what first change like from there the discrimination starts with and the minds will get changed yeah and one more very important thing that you've said or spoken about is the divide 
that people cause on the basis of gender or s- sex and the thing is when that divide further you start seeing an us versus them as opposed to a general us right yeah. you, you don't see solidarity happening because you are seeing someone else as a competitor as an other mm. instead of a we so i think it's extremely important to address that and to tell people that hey you care for each other irrespective of gender irrespective of sex and also in in specific address those issues that are gender specific or uh, yeah gender specific and yeah i think that's how you move forward so that's why it's also very important to involve schools within a project like this and involve mm-hmm. institutes within the project within a project like this and make them i mean or facilitate facilitate them to inculcate the same values within the kind of system that they are following in their school because it it shapes a lot of our lives yeah, yeah. It, it just shapes up the minds of the young people young students who are just starting their career right now it's not uh, after they reach a certain age they have to know about it but uh, you or me or some other things they can just start up from the starting age that's how they can cope up their self and that's the how we can bring a little bit change So yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. So anything else? Uh yeah, I have one thing. Yeah, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um Okay. What kind of support should a girl get in order to speak about discrimination, violence, harassment, IT thing? What kind of support should a girl get in order to speak about this? Because when we when speak something, there are many uh, bunch of people who just bring us down. So what yeah. kind of or some should we get out of this? I think it's very important for anyone to have a support system that actually believes them, trusts in them. Right now, if I'm if even my own friends are going to say that you are lying about this person sexually abusing you because this person is not capable of that this person is also our friend when you have your own friends saying that you start questioning your own reality so it's extremely important for us to have our own support system our support system that can reinforce our faith our belief in ourselves and can ensure that we get the care that we deserve so yeah. that is my thing you need to stick together just sticking together and removing us from a situation like yeah. that it's just the victory yeah. Um, yeah i think and that's where even the creation of safe spaces comes in when we are going when pretty sure you would have heard the word safe space a lot through your rakshan module so yeah. when we are talking about empathy when we are talking about uh, qualities like speaking together when we are talking about qualities like community building and um, what else do we speak about we talk about respect we talk about assertion of boundaries we talk about consent so all these factors culminate to create a safe space and if we can create that for every single one of us then and you know actually join forces then there is nothing that can go wrong and we create a world that is can actually prevent harm that's all we need. we need to stick together <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. And moreover, if a person has or is a victim or a survivor of this kind of issues, uh, he would be, be uh, he would have a better platform, and this would be a better platform for him to explain what he has gone through, so that remaining the youth members who are going from the same trauma and same thing, that would be more easy for them to uh just recollect and just go in a proper way rather than panicking the situation and taking the wrong step or a wrong decision. So I think this would be yeah, and the thing is like um when we are talking about healing, when we are talking about creative expression or something like that, we are talking about putting yourself out there, putting your pain out there because as a way of you know dealing with it, and I it it's not all the time effective. I mean, each person is affected in various multitudes of ways, but. it is important that these people can yeah that they can come together and they can speak about their issues that's why when we talk about safe spaces in the traditional sense we are going to talk about people who gone through the gone through similar experiences so that i don't have to explain the fact that 
I don't need to explain the harm that was caused to me. You will understand the harm that is caused to me and you will understand why it's why I feel the way I feel. Right. So that's why it's necessary to even have that community support. Right. Uh, there is another question for you. Uh, majority of the people say that women dressing is the root cause of violence against women. What do you think about that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What is the main cause of violence against women? No, majority of the people think that women dressing is one of the main cause for the violence against oh. women. So what do you think about it? What are your opinions? That it's a very, uh, it's a, uh, to put it very, <laughs> okay, I'm trying to be respectful here. So <laughs> it's a very bad opinion. <laughs> it's a wrong opinion. <laughs> you can't have that opinion. <laughs> Because like okay. when we have the things how we want to live. So what is it? Okay, so first firstly mm -hmm. when if they're going to talk about it, firstly, if you are going to analyze the research that is there, you can see that it is not any kind of clothing that determines what happens to you. It's the kind of power that the other person is given. Secondly, we need to if you you sh we need to stop just we need to stop considering abuse as just, like especially sexual abuse just as an abuse of just as a, just as a sexual act but we need to start looking at an, it as an act of oppression and that is that's a that's a major difference that you're bringing in in a point of view because when you see it as a an act of oppression you can see that there is a that what the power dynamics are that exist and that is and that is how it is caused this person literally thought that hey this person is of this gender or is of this community is alone in this situation and i can exploit that situation because i am also i because i yield this much power when we are going to start looking at it like that that's when we can see that it's not like Clothing doesn't even come into the picture. You can wear it to anything. <laughs> Look, whenever you're total covered or whatever you wear, anyhow, if a person wants to do something like IT anything, people just do it. And why do you blame them on the dressing style? Or whatever? Yeah. It's their mindset, it's their mentality, what they have to change. It's not as who have to we have to change our dressing style or something. Look, if we are totally covered or whatever we wear, like short dresses, anything. It's the person who just taunt us or help, or just give us an ITC while we are going around or just come at us. It's their mindset. We can't change that. It's just that we, we have can to change that. We can change that, but not at the certain point when we're uh, going through it. Yeah, when you're going through it, of course. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I was going to say something which I conveniently oh, okay. forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just completely blank. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's also important that, okay, this is where the entire point about safety comes in, right? When you're going to start looking at safety as something that, okay, it is important to defend yourself. It is important to take care of yourself, of course. But you need to start looking at safety as a community responsibility. That's how that change occurs. Like even if there is if there is someone who is teasing us or someone who is abusing us, if we are going to take the step of calling them out on it and we are going to get support for doing so, then that is it's in itself a great change. That in itself will Yeah, that in itself will reinforce the fact that it's not what we are wearing, but it's the fact that they come from where they come from and we come from where we come from. And that's why that is happening. So we need to start establishing that now. Yeah. Does that answer your question? I'm sorry, I just went all over the place. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Oh, you can ask now. Yeah, yeah so I just have one last question for us and we have only like, I think one minute left. Okay. So, so our fin my final question is, if you had to use three words to describe your experience as an activist as a Russian, then what would those three words be uh, fearless hmm. uh, positive and 
ambitious to this one. <laughs> That's a beautiful word for, cho for choosing and I'm so glad that you associate that with the project that we are doing. And also, there were people who tagged Street Cause GNI a lot. It's so a huge, yeah. So a huge shout out to them and to the kind of work that they are also doing, especially within Hyderabad. So thank you so much for doing that. And uh, yeah, so thank you, Sarah. It was a pleasure having you and we hope to create more reactions like you who are capable of preventing child sexual abuse and ending violence. And in order to facilitate that, it would be great if our viewers, our audience can visit the link in our bio and um, make a donation. So let's all make homes a safe space together. If you have any doubts or any questions like Sarah does, then please do reach out to us. And um, if you also want to be in a live like Sarah, then um, do let us know maybe, and we can make this a regular thing because so I absolutely I, enjoyed this. I have to have, again, have a stage of like this to experience. Yeah. So, yeah. So, thank you so much for being here and uh, stay tuned. We have one more guest on the uh, Sakshi page who is uh, Sharmila Sharma. She was, a tra she was with us, uh, but now she has gone on to venture into app acting and singing and dancing i mean act acting and dancing and yeah so come visit us and watch even that and uh, thank you so much for being here today it was lovely yeah. bye, bye. bye sarah take care bye.